change is inevitable. Everything is in constant change. Time doesn't stop for anyone. father's favorite saying and he says things has been bad but they're gonna get worse that was his favorite sir and my grandmother said there ain't nothing you can do about it and that incredible passive acceptance of things which is an Appalachian trait really angered me when I was a college kid when you just let people take over and not even care what they do or question it, that's where we have problems. The university started acting on its own and um, the community didn't feel a part of the university anymore. I think for the long time, old time locals, they just would prefer to ignore that Western Carolina exists here at all. Which to me is rather depressing because again, that's part of this is this this is a large portion of this community. I like the university. It's you know it's great to have it here. You know I support it in many ways, um, but they don't have any business running the municipality surrounding the university. Cullowhee is a small mountain town and home to Western Carolina University. But there is a lot more to Cullowhee than just WCU. While it has no official borders. The greater Cullowhee area is seven times larger than Western's campus. It's always been difficult to me if somebody said, take me to the center of Cullowhee. I, I would not know exactly where to go. It's a, it's a township, it's not an incorporated area. There's the old Cullowhee down on the river. There's the newer Cullowhee over on the four lane. There's campus area. Anywhere that you've got a college and then you've got uh, a rural or a local culture, there's going to be some friction there. I had grown up hearing and, and as a result believed that the whole reason for Western Carolina existing was to serve the needs of Western North Carolina. And along that, uh, it suddenly decided it was significant in the southeastern United States. And at times when they started talking about their plans for the future, I expected them to start talking about colonizing planets. The school actually started off as like a, a semi-private academy. What the community was doing was raising extra funds to subscribe to a teacher, to pay them extra to stay. Over the years, this grows from being a Cullowhee Academy, essentially a, a elementary school and high school. Finally, in 1929, it's uh, recognized as a full-fledged four-year college. As Western grew and prospered, Cullowhee started losing its own identity. The thriving campus was moving forward and Cullowhee was slowly dying. Um, there was a, a big stink, for lack of a, a better term, 25 years ago when some of the motels realized that Western was providing sleeping arrangements on campus. They actually had some little facilities on campus and uh, visiting faculty and stuff like that could stay in those facilities and people said, you're cutting our throats, is the way they described it. You're cutting the throats of business people. <clears throat> and what I see going on at Western today resembles that. The relationships between the, the local residents, land owners, business people, and the university is poor at best. The biggest thing that I've ever seen that cl connects Cullowhee to Western is Mountain Heritage Day, and that's one day, and that's six hours a day, and, and that's it. But so much of Cherokee, of the mountains of Cullowhee, is so invested and in, poured into Western. I don't see how Western just hasn't tried to attempt to reconnect with Cullowhee. It's almost like, you know, Cullowhee was the mom and Western is the baby, and the baby kind of grew up and it's like, screw you, mom, and deuces. What I see occurring is people like me who are outsiders, who are not from here, ain't from around here, trying to make decisions without involving the greater Cullowhee area. One big change that affected all of Cullowhee was the construction of a four-lane section of Highway 107, designed for the sole purpose of increasing access to the university. 
The new highway diverted traffic from Old Cullowee Road, and this area was forgotten. There was this whole little thriving community, what we call around here, Old Cullowee. When the four lane went through, it basically just completely bypassed that whole area. There was a big difference in traffic, and I think it's actually gotten worse. You basically saw the old area of Cullowee dry up. Now it's no longer a destination. It's just a means to an end, a way to get to campus. 107 took over. 107 is the one that is going to be the main road. We've still got uh, the old traditional Cullowee Cafe there in Old Cullowee. We've all actually grown up in the restaurant business. Back in the old Cullowee Cafe, we did a, a good business, but uh, there wasn't that many students here. They've really fought to carve out um, their niche. Local businesses not only compete with the campus and neighboring towns, but they are also dependent on how long the university is open. These businesses must make enough money in the eight months that Western is in session to cover their entire fiscal year. I think Western needs to stay involved in the lives of people right around them. Where is the original antenna of the school? I'd like to see it go back to what it was, and that was to improve the life of mountain people. Each year, Western continues to expand. As a community, we must all be wary of the effects of growth, for our valley is precious. There's just something, something special about the Valley of the Lilies. Maybe my kids will find a place here. Maybe they won't. But if they don't find a place here, I think they'll carry with them a part of the mountains wherever they go. I believe that people are attached to mountains more than they are attached to other places. I think there's something about a mountain. I've taken them for granted for 19 years and never really looked at them. And I tell my grandbaby every morning on the way to school when I take her to school, let's, let's look at something different about the mountains this morning. It's never the same. I love the beauty of coloring. And I love that a lot of this is pristine. It's an absolutely beautiful area. And going from the tops of those mountains down to the bottom of the valley in Kolohe there is like going from Canada to North Florida. You find all the different varieties of plants and animals right there in one pocket that you would, you know, all up and down the, the eastern Appalachian Mountains. So it's really a unique place. If you have a good day and just looking out the window made you have a good day, then that's awesome. That's the best part of being in a town like this. You know, as a matter of fact, I think I want to die here. You know, if I do, I'll be happy. <laughs>
you could get from town to town. And that's going to help a lot with community when you have locally a place that you can go and walk and hike. The River Park is another one of those aspects that will be wonderful for community. Now there's a few entities on campus that would like to establish a river park such as you know a boat docking area and picnic area and that kind of thing. I hope it's smart and savvy about its growth. I just hope it's not reckless and, and, and doesn't fight it. Fighting your growth is not the way to go. You know, embracing it and being wise about it. Thinking ahead, being proactive. You know, that's that's what's going to make this wonderful. I would like to see more people coming out, being, you know, taking the small risk of speaking their mind in, in a more public forum than, than has been happening. You have to make sure that whatever it is that you have to say, it is said, you know, because, you know, what's the point of obviously, you know, sitting around complaining that they didn't do something, but you didn't even show up to a meeting or you never talk or you never, you know. I definitely believe that there's a, a lot of potential in Cullowee. It's all here. It's, it, it's just, it, it just needs to be fertilized and watered. It's all here. For anybody that cares and they love Cullowee and they want to be here and enjoy having their family grow and everything, get more involved, you know, try to at least, you know, set an example. Hopefully more people realize that they, this is a beautiful place. This is a really great place to be. You know, it might be little, and sometimes it might be a little bit boring because there's not the big flashy lights and everything of a big city, but that's the appeal. You can make change happen, or you can let it happen, but it's gonna happen either way. Without the collective voice of the community, Kulawi may be lost. What is your voice telling you?